Ah. The world is a very different place than it used to be. Welcome. Things were very tribal when I was around. Families were important. It does not seem to be that important anymore. <clears throat> not as they were back then. But of course, families can get very sidetracked. <laughs> Who are I'm we here to tell to? you about family values and how that they are very important, especially in this day and age. And I know that some of you have family members that are estranged and not part of your understanding anymore. They have taken a different turn or a different thought process that does not seem to jive or connect with yours. Was there a question already? Yes, uh, if you would tell us your name, that would be good. Thank you. My name is Abraham. Welcome, Abraham. Thank you. You know um, who I am. And you've read about me. Me. Many yes. of the things that you read are not quite true. As things have been embellished over time, but I did exist. And I was a, a good leader. I don't know if I was a great leader, but I was a good leader. <clears throat> and the family values were very important to me. And I had many children and many grandchildren. And it was important to me that they were all taken care of, although just like in these days and times. Some of my children were estranged to me because they did not like the strictness of the law that I was following, the law of God. Now, in this day and age, laws are not so much for spirituality as they are for keeping people in line who do not have spirituality. And that is exactly what laws are for to keep those that do not have an idea or grasp on who God is in line with the earth energies and with the earth people and things of that nature. <clears throat> Are there any other questions? I know that I could go on about the family, but I feel that there are many who want to speak. Well... Greetings, Abraham. Much love. Hello. Much love. I don't know where to start. Um, there are so many questions. Um, can you give some advice on the split that occurred that caused... I don't want to say that it caused Islam, but Islam and and Judaism both started with you. Yes. So I guess can you talk about your your two sons? I can tell you that there was hypocrisy. <clears throat> Many splits and divisions come with selfishness. Come with the own de their own desire for power and greed. And therefore, the division between my sons was due to the fact that they knew their inheritance, and yet they wanted more. That happens much in this day and age that you live in as well. But the division was also in creating a belief system that they could live in and not feel guilty about. Does this make sense to you? Many people create a spiritual reality that they can live in, which is fine if it is directly connected to God. But many times it's more directed to what they want than to God. 
And this was the fault of my children. This was the fault of many people. This is the fault of religion in general. They want what they want. And so they manipulate the people to push them into the direction that they would have them to go because it is more in line with their thought process and their ability to control the group than it is with sharing God's purity and love. They lose sight of it when problems emerge, which all humans will give you problems. And so in, instead of saying, let's deal with this if, the way God, God would deal with it and try to do it the right way, they make up a rule or bring themselves to a place where they have to speak in a way that is manipulative to keep these people in line. Because just speaking the truth does not seem strong enough or powerful enough. Or giving them the connection to God that they should have is not, they don't know how to do it. Because they have not yet connected fully with God themselves. And so how can they help someone connect with God purely, if they are not purely connected themselves. Does this answer at least part of your question? <clears throat> uh, yes. Yes. And, and, and <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't articulate at this point. Um, but yes, I, I, I get how that the love of God, which is the law, which is the basis of all the law, is, yes. is important in every situation where people need to, where when people interact with each other, it's that love that is not present sometimes. That is correct. They do not keep themselves close in the purity of the relationship. They keep themselves close only in their own wishes and desires. They do not wish for their children to do certain things. They wish them to do what they want them to do. However, each individual must see their child as unique and that they should be doing what God wants them to do and not what they want them to do how God wants them to act and not how they want them to act. Society has made rules and regulations for how people should be and how people should interact. But that is not the way of God. God is into the individual as his true self is within them and his true aspect of them is to come out. And sometimes that is not what society wants to see or hear. Do you understand? <clears throat> Absolutely. So I'm going to pass the mic. And it is the over. same with you. God has a plan for you that is unique. And you will not fit into the society the way that many people do. And some will look down on that because they look at society as the ruling class. No matter what what your peers may say, they are colored by society in general. And you must not be, and none of you must be, because you are to change what society is. You are to be the family of which I speak of. Your children, your family, is the love and embracing of all the things that were taught to them by mother and father. If you are the mother and father, keep your children close and know what they are doing and do not be afraid to speak to them even if they don't want to speak to you because children think they know everything at one point. But you know what? You can calmly and rationally keep them near you by speaking to them in a way that is equal. When they reach a certain point in their life, they wanted to be treated equal. Now, you can sit down and tell them 
that once they act like they're being equal, then they can be treated equal. But you can treat them equal in their inequality because you love them. And you can say to them, I look at you in love. I look at you not in your actions. I look at you in my flesh as my flesh and spirit as my spirit and know that you are unique and I love you. No matter what these things that you are doing now, I will always love you and not turn you away. This will sink in. This will bring them back. Even if they move out from you for a short while, they will realize that you look at them with respect and honor. And they must look back with respect and honor at some point. And if they do not, then they have entered, they have taken in a negative entity. Now some of you have dealt with that. And that is not a good thing. It is not a fun thing. It is not a thing of to be looked at lightly. But it is something that you must be aware of, and you will be aware of it if you are looking properly with the love of God onto your family. Hello, Abraham. This is Brina again. On the subject that you're speaking of, how, because it's difficult sometimes to know where you're being uh, overprotective and telling your children, um, basically wanting them to live a life that you want. And, I understand. And, and, allowing them to follow whatever their path is. Listen to me carefully. If your children had problems that you didn't really want to know about, would you have them tell you? Yes. Of course you would. And so therefore, it is just respectful that you would tell them your problems as well if it affects them. It is respect. It is not that you're trying to hurt them. It's not that you're trying to manipulate them. But you are respecting their intelligence. You're respecting their place in the family and letting them know some things that are happening. Now, there are private things that you should not share, but the general knowledge of the situation if it is affecting the children, they should know, should they not? It is just like if someone is adopted. How should they find out that they are adopted? Should they find out through the grapevine by accidentally finding their birth certificate? No. You should tell them when they're old enough to understand. This is respect. And this is love. And this is strength. Because when you are strong enough to let your, your children know exactly what is happening and respect them enough to understand, they may go through a small period of rebellion or hurt or disappointment or embarrassment. But the very fact that you let them know will give you respect. They will come back and say, she treated us equally. She treated us the way she should have. Because to keep it from them is actually a lie. To pretend like there is nothing wrong is not the truth. To share the truth is to share your strength. And to give them strength as well. Because you are there to support them even with this negative information. You are the support system. Do you understand that? 
and they will come to you instead of turning away from you, saying, she's not, or he's not, or they are not telling the truth. And I know it. They can sense it. It comes out in actions by others and by yourself, and actions with those around you that do know the truth. They cannot help but see the truth of these actions. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Now love them. And you, you do protect them. There is protection in the warmth of the mother's love, in the very fact that they can openly come to you if they know that they can. You are a great and bright light. In every child's life, their parents are a bright light until they put it out. And some parents have done that. They've extinguished their own light from your, their child's eyes because what? They do not speak. They do not act. They are not involved. They do not respect the boundaries of the child or the boundaries of parenthood. But that is a secret some parents cannot know. Because why? They were not given it from their parents. You see, parenthood wisdom sometimes comes from the, the generation before, or the generation before. But if it's not coming from the generation before, then you must be the beginning generation that shows respect, love, honor, and inclusion to your children. Do you understand that? Yes. Much love. Much love. You are, the wisdom of parenthood is that you include your children, even if it is from a distance. You let them know that they are included. Does anyone have any other questions? Yes. Shalom, Avraham. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well. Uh, I'm sure and I have plenty of questions for you. First of all, it's an honor to speak with you. It's an honor to speak with you as well, because we are all equals together. Yes. Um, my first question, question is about Akedat Itzak. It's a um, very harsh story that I don't know if there's any real truth to that, but it's when you took Isaac to the mountain and God ordered you to kill him and stop you in the last second. Can you be more clear about it? Because many people are confused about that story. Yes, I can explain it completely and very positively. Oh. When God spoke to me about that particular situation, he gave reasons. But, but first of all, I want to say this. The connection from God to myself was pure. I saw that no matter what he told me, it was the truth. I saw that no matter what I did, God would be there with me. And so I trusted God. And I took Isaac to the mountain. Now, at first, when I took Isaac to the mountain, I did not know that he was going to say to kill him. First, he told me, which is not written probably, that we were going on an outing together to share some wisdom and uh pray to God together, and have some community with God. Once we were there, God said, your child cannot be effective. And I was wondering what he meant by that. He said, your child cannot be effective right now. He must leave and be in spirit. Now, that was not the truth. 
Why would God say something of this nature to me? Only because there was something in my life that was also untrue. Our connection had been sullied somehow. And so he wanted to show the purity of his love. And so I went forth. And I did as he said. And before that moment, with great tears and sorrow, I was sobbing. I was brought to my complete surrender to God. A complete and total surrender to God. And he stopped me. stopped me and do you know what my son understood he saw the God influence in my life and he saw that this was actually not a lesson for me but for him that my love of God was so strong that I would sacrifice him. But then when I freed him, he said to me, many things are not recorded, but he said to me, I saw the love of God and I knew that I was safe. He knew that he was safe. He said, even if I were to die, I knew that I was safe. And this was the lesson that God gave to him. And he gave me so much in that moment. He gave me all my life that I had lived back into a pure state. But I still questioned, why did you not? tell me the truth and he said I did tell you the truth because without that lesson your God your son would not have gone on to be who he was that lesson needed to be learned needed to be seen and needed to be experienced so it was not a lie it was the truth at that moment do you understand Yes, uh, that is much more yes, much more positive story than what it's been told. And exactly. Yes, I'm very happy about it. And well, I have so many questions for you, but the second one would be the Brit Ben Aptarim. It's when God told you to uh, take separate the uh, parts of meat and spread it across two rows and walk in, in the middle, if I remember correctly. And he said that that will be the one, uh, the ritual that will bound the Israelis or humankind with him and with you. Can you tell me something about that story? Because even that story is like not really understood. Do you know what I'm speaking about? That particular story has been cha changed many times throughout history because many did not understand it. It was not that there, it was not like that at all. Um, what what was happening was the sacrifices at the time. As you remember, we would sacrifice a lamb or a ram or a, a beast of the field. Sometimes even a bull or a or whatever we felt that was necessary to uh, to cleanse. You see, it was a, a prophecy of the coming of Christ that blood would be shed, correct? Yeah, you may not so. know that, different that you are Jewish. But it was a prophecy yeah. of the coming of Christ that he would shed blood. And only blood was that that purified the soul. Why is that? Because it was the life giver of the body. Therefore, these different stories were to 
predict or prophesy of the coming of Christ who gave his life. But there are many inconsistencies also with that story. I could go on and on. However, what, the, what was meant to be said in that story is that the animal was slain and the parts of the body taken out. And the reason why is so that people could understand that they are not just made of one thing, one particular part, one particular thought process, one particular, uh, one particular bladder or heart or liver, but that all parts come together to make the whole. Now this was the beginning of the process of describing what the church should be if there was to be a church. It is that all come together and uh, be helping one another to make a body. Now the idea of a church is sullied by the fact that there was bureaucracy, corruption, uh, greed, and all these things. And so it is not necessary in your day and age to actually be part of this because you have evolved from that thought process into a purity of spirit. You understand? Yes. So, but therefore in that time, to keep the people uh, unified, we had to teach the lesson that all parts of the body were made to be in one. And that would be in God. And now, the purity of God, connection to God here to here, is pure. It cannot be explained or could not be fully handled by the thought processes of people from that day and age. And as you evolved as a species, as humans we evolved, our thoughts changed throughout different eras and generations until now we are in a place where we can speak about the spirit in a more pure way. I see. And one last question. It's about a structure called Mecca, the most holiest place for Muslims. Uh, from my yes. understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, it was built by you and Ishmael. Yes, yes. we had some hand. Yes. Can you explain what it is? Because no one can, don't really know it what it is. It is the place where we first saw the spirit. And now we are to understand that what we saw was perhaps not the spirit, but of those from another world that were coming to speak to us and understand. But it became a very holy place for many, many people. Even as religions broke off, this place was empowered from the energy that was left behind by these beings. But now we know that God had his hand in that as well. Thank you. Much, much love to you. Much love. Hello, Abraham. I have a few questions here. Um, one is, uh, what led you to Israel? What led me to Israel? Yeah. The spirit of truth. Okay. I knew that I had to go. God had set in my heart a mission, a place. A pl the place that we were with the peoples and the tribes that I had around me was no longer sufficient for life, life in general. There was not enough vegetation, there was not enough farming, there was not enough animals, there was not enough water anymore. And so a move was necessary. And this was the place that we were sent. Okay, thank you. The next question was, what are some of the lessons you learn about God and mortality during that lifetime? So many, I cannot count them. I 
was to be a spiritual leader and see many things that not many could see and lead the people that could would follow me because they saw that God was with me. But it was not that I was a, a very arrogant man. I was not arrogant. And I, was, I tried to give my people everything of prosperity that they could possibly want. And God helped me with that. I loved the people. I loved the land. I loved all things of nature and of God. And therefore, when I moved, I moved in the Spirit of God. And I cannot explain how he moves different people to do different things. But he does come to you and speak to you in a practical way. He spoke to me in a practical way about the needs of the people. There were not enough food, not enough water, not enough land. The tribes were getting bigger, and so we had to move. So all as I can say is God speaks to each of us in a practical way. When we know that things cannot go on the way they are, then they are to be changed. And this is, this is the practicality of God the love of God and his bounty to show us what he wants. Okay, on that note, I don't know if you can comment about this, but um, what do you think we need, what would it take for us to um, unite the Middle East? Honesty. They delude themselves and they lie to themselves about what God wants and how God sees different things. If they were to actually connect with God in his pure spirit and be true about what is wanted, what is wanted is all of them to come together, not fight each other, not be the greatest among them. Not to be greedy and prosperous, but to be broken, and then they may see the true light. Because sometimes in your brokenness, you turn to God in a way that is not like any other time. And they need to humble themselves, none of which of these tribes have done. Do you see any humility? I do not. I see boasting, and I see greed, and I see, I want that. This is our land, and we must have it. Land means nothing when it comes to the spirit. Land means nothing. Wealth means nothing. The things they put their values on mean nothing when it comes to the Spirit of God. Because why? If you were to give yourself over, prosperity would be yours. The land would be yours. Whatever you want would be yours, as long as you're in the purity of the Spirit. But yet some choose the purity of the spirit, but to be low and humble. And that is fine. But the truth of the matter is, all the desires of your heart can be met with God. And if you desire nothing, that can be met by God as well. So how do, how did you distinguish between being humble and uh, letting people step all over you? There is a big difference. Humility is not boasting. Humility is keeping who you are in a wonderful and loving space. Tramping, people that tramp on you are not tramping on humility. They're tramping on weakness. 
in the sense that you are letting them do what they want. Now, when you are humble, you do not boast or you do not push your opinion on anyone else and you bring yourself into a, a sense of, of love and unity. But if someone pushes you, you see, the outside world pushes on each individual, do they not? You do not have to accept that. Accepting that is not any part of humility. You must stand up and say, you are wrong. I'm sorry, this is the way I believe. And if you cannot respect that, then you have to move out here. But you cannot accept being pushed around. That is not part of humility. Humility and what that is are something totally different. Humility is a state of mind where you give thanks to God and are not bragging and boasting and pushing yourself to be arrogant or these things of this nature. But being stepped on is a matter of intrusion. You, it is not meant for you to be intruded upon. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because sometimes as, as I human I beings... I wish I could in better words, but that's the best I can do at this time. Yeah, because sometimes as human beings, we think we're being humble, but we're allowing others to s step on us. There is an inner strength that comes with the Spirit of God, and He will not tolerate your degradation or your being put down. So if you call on him, he will give you the strength to rise above that. Even if it means that you are tortured, you must stand up for what you believe. That is not any part of humility, but it is part of your strength in God. Okay. Thank you very much for that. I think that will help a lot of people. Thank you. Um, Sarah? Hello, Abraham. Hello. Much love to you. Much love. Um, my question is, were Sarah and Hagar the same woman? No. No. Hagar was a mistress. Sarah was my wife. I okay. So I'm I'm still trying to understand how is it that I was given both names and what's my role you, in that? Your you were given both names because you were you were given my seed, both of you. And you are both from my lineage, and you have come together at this point. It is very possible. And if you are Hagar and Sarah at once, then you will know the beauty of childbirth at some point. And it will be that your child is worthy of gifts. Okay. I've been trying to reconcile that all my life. Do not so. worry. It is not something for you to worry about. It is the way of the universe to speak to you in a very gentle and beautiful feminine way that you are beloved. Um, because the Bible said they, they hated each other. Is that true? Not anymore. Once they go to the Oversoul, love is the only thing that will conquer. But in love your time, did they hate all. each other? But in, in their... I do not say that they hated... E well, Hagar definitely had stronger feelings than Sarah because Hagar was jealous of the position of Sarah. Do you understand that? And was eventually turned out. But Sarah was not happy with the attitude of Hagar, and so she was disgruntled. She did not hate Hagar, but she did feel that she was being persecuted by Hagar because of her attitude. So now, when all, 
when it all comes out, Hagar was turned away because she could not get along with Sarah and she could not abide by the proper thought processes that God had intended. Okay. Thank you. Does that make sense to you? Yes. You are beloved, and now Hagar and Sarah are showing you that they no longer hate each other, but they love each other and understand each other's positions at this time. And Hagar is equal to Sarah, and Sarah is equal to Hagar, and their children are both beautiful. Okay, thank you. I'll pass the mic. Christine? Greetings, Abraham. Greetings. I was wondering, um, for some reason this is bringing out um, my wound of the feminine. Um, were yeah. women that disrespected in your um, particular religion or following of God? There were. It was sad at the time that women were looked at as lesser beings. But as understood now, they are equal in every way, shape, and form. But the men had to take charge because they did the hunting and the bringing in of the uh, food to the family. And that is why women took the second place, is because man was actually the, the, the feeder of the tribe. And so... In their arrogance, and it was their arrogance, it is. men took the leading role over the women and, and felt pride for what they had done, where they should have felt that they were doing the right thing. That is what they should have felt, that they were doing right by feeding their family, not that they were better than their family. But this was an attitude taken on by men for centuries. But God deals with each on his own. And when they reach the oversoul, do you realize that now in this day and age that you live in, women are looked at more equally than they ever have been before. And this is due to the evolution of thought. This is due to the understanding of what women and men do and how equal they are. The very fact that women can bear children should make them greater, don't you think? They have the greater of the creative capacities. But now, things are looking differently. You could look at women as greater. The, you can bring out women's attributes as being greater than men's. And you can look at men's attributes and bring them out as being greater than women's. But to be honest, they are equal in every way. Thank you. I feel better that way. Much love to you. Love to you. Does anyone in the room with Jim have any questions? Very well. Perhaps it's time I should go. There is there is one more question, uh, Abraham, from um, yes. Jasmina, and she would like to know um, if you have any messages for her. The messages for her is that God's purity and love is coming to her. Accept it. Open up to it. Feel the purity of it. There are times when she feels that there's no one around and there's much loneliness, but God wants her to feel a greater sense of community with him and with the spirits that are around her, which are many. Okay, is there, is there anything she should, not should, but could do to to uh, to do that and to overcome that Actually, feeling. She, 
already knows that meditation and prayer and and this, there are a couple other things she does that very much help. The, the meditation portion, just relax into it a little more. Don't try so hard, but relax into your meditation. If you do not feel or sense anything, that is not a problem because God is in every inch, every molecule of the universe. And so if you are in silence with God, he is speaking to you in some way, in your subconscious, in your body, in your, in your very existence, in your soul. Okay. Thank you, Abraham. And um, thank you for answering our questions, for being here. It um, was necessary I be here. Remember about your families. And, and keep them close and love them no matter, even if you do not like their personalities, you can love their souls because their soul is part of God. Do you understand that? Look in and see the soul. See the God in them and treat them as that God spirit would be treated. If you do not treat each individual as a spiritual person, then you are missing part of your connection with humanity. Okay, thank you. Could you do a prayer before you go? Yes. It might be a little old school for some of you, it's okay. Mighty God, Father of all things, maker of the universe and creator of the unity, love, and source of all our existences, watch over us and guide our paths. Make sure that we are looking for the right things to do. I know that many times our thought processes have to be in the world and have to be geared to the things of survival and the things that make us who we are as a person individually. But bring out the perfection that is us in you because you have your unique way with us. I love you truly. And thank you for the lessons that m might be hard and might seem like you are being dishonest with us, but there is a reason for all things. When I took my son to the mountain, and when I thought that you had not told me the truth afterwards, and you explained yourself, I was full of love and joy and understanding. I pray that all these that come to you will feel the same. Give your honor to each of them. Bring out their wisdom, which is inherent within each of them. Bring out your beauty and originality, which is inherent within each of them. Love and guidance and beauty. I just pray that this era of the, this era in your world becomes an era of remembrance for the beauty that it signifies and it creates and will be the beginning of a great era of peace, love, and understanding. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for those beautiful words. Be